Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to Ephesians chapter two, and uh, I'm gonna start in Ephesians chapter two. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you this verse for just a second, and uh, I'm gonna have to. Uh, get Sandy broke in because sometimes the Holy Ghost uh, changes <laughs> to where, you know, uh, where, uh, you know, I, I, I pray as, as God direct my path to the Word, you know, direct my uh, thoughts, direct me to the right resources, direct, you know, uh, and everything. <clears throat> so, but it says um, in Ephesians 2, it says um, in verse 5, When we were dead in sins, hath quickened us or made us alive together with Christ, by grace you are saved. And so the key to salvation is being in Christ, right? Amen. And how are we going to grow this church? In Christ. In Christ, right? Okay, so. <clears throat> and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places, get this, in Christ Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Right? So even right now, as we are down here on earth praising God, we are seated <clears throat> in the heavenly places in Christ, aren't we? Yeah. <coughs> I was... Um, uh, and and uh, that that is just um, an amazing verse to me. Uh, because... Um, in Christ we are seated in heavenly places, that in the ages to come, verse 7, He might show the exceeding riches of His grace in His kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. It says, For by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast, for we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus. There it is in Christ again. For we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. You see, the, the works are already laid out. And, they, uh, and we are to walk in the works of Christ. We are to be the continued ministry of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Right? We don't just make up a ministry. Uh, and we are, we are to walk in the ministry of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And then it says in verse 11, Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, you were called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision, and the flesh made by hands. So, so uh, the uncircumcision is the Gentiles, the circumcision is the, uh, is the Jewish people, right? And so that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, get this, in Christ, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who were sometimes far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Oh, glory. For He is our peace who is has hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself in of twain one new man, so making peace. So Jesus said this uh, on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Last week we looked at, at Isaiah, and we are the, the creation of God. Verse 16, that he might reconcile both into God one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, and whom all the building fitly framed together groweth into a holy temple in the Lord, and whom 
Uh, ye also are built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. Amen. Let's go to the Lord Amen. in prayer. Father, I just pray, Father God, that, Lord, we would get your word this morning in us. I pray, Father God, that we would feed on it. I pray, Father God, that, Lord, uh, we would be in you, Lord, today. Lord, I pray that we'd be in you tomorrow and follow the days following, Lord God. And, Lord, I pray, Father God, that, Lord, thank you uh, for your redemption. Thank you for your salvation. And thank you for your grace. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. As we move forward as the church in Fernley, let us understand that we receive grace and mercy from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, uh, and that His grace and mercy causes a complete turnaround. You see, uh, you know, um, I was uh, one day I was a, I was a hellbound sinner, and then uh, Jesus saved my soul and turned me into a heaven-bound saint. And I, I don't exactly know why He did it, and I don't know exactly how He did it, but I thank God that He did it. Amen. You know what I'm saying? And uh, uh, you know, and and um, and that is uh, so. Then we put our faith not in what we can do. We put our faith in what He has done, right? And so uh, that's uh, that's where our faith comes because we are saved by His grace through the conduit of faith. We have put our faith in Him. So um, uh, and He causes a complete turnaround. Uh, today, many churches uh, preach a politically correct Jesus that is merely a lifestyle enhancer. Oh, you just need to add Jesus to your life, and He'll enhance your life, and and uh, you know, he, and, and if you if you tell Him the right things, uh, He'll bless you with money, and if you tell Him the right things, He's going to bless you this way or that way, and uh, they're a lifestyle enhancer that will, uh, and and, and uh, also if you receive Jesus, He will not cramp your style one bit. I mean, he is going to add to I mean, there's this all kinds of foolishness out there that is being preached, you know, today. But um, uh, Jesus said, if any man come after me, let him pick up his cross daily and follow me. You know, uh, that's not a, a popular message because, uh, you know, when we pick up our cross, that means we're going to the place of death. When we pick up our cross, uh, that means that we die today. When we pick up our cross, that means uh, we die to ourselves and live for Jesus. And so uh, today, uh, many churches are, are preaching a politically correct Jesus is merely a lifestyle enhancer that will not cramp your style and because of his love for us he will take us to heaven when we die. Many seek after the Lord because they need love in their lives. You know, I'm so glad that Jesus loves me but if that, if, if that love of God does not cause a complete turnaround in your life then you may be seeking after the wrong Jesus. The belief in Jesus even is not enough. What do you mean, Pastor Carter? I believe in Jesus. <laughs> well, Sean read it earlier, James uh, 2.19. You know, the devils also believe and tremble. The devil believes in God. But there's one thing, a fact about the devil. He's not saved. Yeah. Even though he believes in God. <clears throat> so you might say, well, I believe in God. Okay. What's God, what's God doing in your life? Did the grace of God cause a complete turnaround? Belief is mental. Obedience on belief is spiritual. Let me say that again. Belief is mental. Obedience on belief is spiritual. Many seek Jesus because of his, of his moral goodness. And they believe that they might add some moral goodness to their lives. I'm going to make a New Year's resolution. But moral goodness is just an illusion if one tries to merely to clean up the flesh. You see, a lot of people, they want to go to rehab or they want to go to this and they, they'll do anything but die. I mean, the flesh will do anything but die, right? The flesh will do anything but go to the cross. And they want to add Jesus to their life because they think that, you know, they're going to get some moral goodness out of it and he's going to save their marriage. He's going to save their, you know, their stuff, you know, their, their life and, and different things like that. But it's like pulling a pig out of the mud and giving that pig a bath. And you might even put some perfume on that pig. Make that pig smell better. To cover up the stink. You might even put a little uh, cute little bow around his neck. Pink. If it's a sow. You know. But as soon as you let him loose, he will 
go back and wallow in the mud. Why? Because he's a pig. That's the flesh. Your flesh is going to do the same thing. Whatever is born of flesh is flesh, Jesus said, and whatever is born of the Spirit is spirit. You see, in order for us to understand God and be in Christ, we have to be born again to the Spirit of God. And, and uh, we cannot just uh, say, well, I believe in God, or I can, you know, I'm just going to add this to my, uh, my life and, and become moral, uh, uh, some moral goodness. And uh, Christi you know, Christianity is more than moral goodness. Many seek Jesus because of his wisdom, they, and they want to add God to their intellects. And uh, the, the statement that God came to make good men better is uh, one that uh, uh, the Freemasons use, you know. God came to make good men better. Uh, is to uh, elude that if one's good already, and God can make you better. God didn't come to make good men better. God came to make dead men alive. Amen. Amen. The Bible says there is none good, no, not one. The wisdom is, of God does not save your soul. <clears throat> it's only when one experiences a mercy in the grace of God that a complete change will be made in your life. The mercy of, of God is God not giving us what we deserve, but before we can understand His mercy, we must occupy the place of a hell-deserving sinner. In my case, it was not a far stretch for me to imagine when God saved me, I qualified. I was a sinner. When God saved me, I was weak in sin. When God saved me, I was strung out on drugs. I mean, when God saved me, I can, I can tell you a big story, but I, I don't want to tell you about the old guy because he stinks. He wallowed in the mud. And he wallowed with sinners. I, I want to tell you what Jesus did to me. I want to tell you about the new man. I want to tell you about me being in Christ. You know what I'm saying? Because, uh, because uh, there's nothing better than being in Christ. And so the mercy, uh, uh, it is, it, the mercy of God is not giving us what we deserve, but before we can understand His mercy, we must occupy the place of a hell-deserving sinner. And so I used to sin like I preach, full throttle. You know. You want to know how to sin? I can tell you how. You know, don't sit there and look so sanctimonious. Some of you were just like that, so you know. Go. Today we'll examine the scripture of the complete turnaround of the Apostle Paul. Saul of Tarsus, he was. When a Jew becomes a follower of Christ, that Jew's family will hold a funeral service for that individual because they're dead to him now, because they became a follower of Christ. When a Muslim becomes a believer in Christ, many times their lives are in danger from their families. Why? Because the mercy and grace of God caused a complete turnaround, and they cannot be called what they were before because they're new creatures in Christ Jesus. I have a, Gene and I have a Muslim friend who got saved. As a matter of fact, he's been in this church giving his testimony uh, years ago. And um, there, at the age of nine, he had, uh, I think he said, nine million dollars in the bank. I mean, it was his, his dad was a mufti and and different things like that, and uh, um, God saved his soul, and there's a, a contract out on his life because uh, he turned to Christ. You have to go to the cross. And you know, God can save us, can't he? Why then does the American think that he does not have to change to be saved? Let's go to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy. Let's see. First Timothy. Let's go to chapter 1. Verse 9. Now Paul is writing this letter to Timothy and um, he's um, Timothy is one of Paul's uh, preacher boys. You know, he's training up, you know, Timothy and Titus and those guys. And so um, it says in verse 9, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man but for the lawless and disobedient 
For the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and uh, uh, and uh, murderers of mothers, murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind. And some of your translations will read homosexuals. Uh, that's the, the those that defile themselves with uh, mankind. For men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and uh, if there be any other thing that's contrary to sound doctrine. So if we are in Christ, Christ <coughs> fulfilled the law, didn't he? Yep. And so if we are in Christ, we have fulfilled the law in Christ. All right. So the law is not made for those in Christ. The law is made for the ones that are outside of Christ. The law uh, is made for the ones uh, to, uh, to prove to them uh, what they are before God. And uh, the Ten Commandments or the law uh, tells us our guilt before God, doesn't it? And so, uh, uh, and so it says, um, uh, if there be any... Other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, verse 11, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God which was committed to my trust, and I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled me, for he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. It's the ministry, it wasn't Paul's ministry. He put Paul into the ministry of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Alright? Now, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is where? In Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Wow. Howbeit for this cause I obtained mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth uh, uh, all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. If Paul could, if, if God could save Paul, he could save you. Yes, sir. Now unto the king eternal, immortal, uh, invisible, uh, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. This charge I commit unto thee, Son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before thee, that thou, that, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. So we're in a warfare, aren't we? Holding faith, holding faith and good conscience, which uh, have some, uh, having uh, put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck. Of whom is Hymenius and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. How would you like to have been Hymenius or Alexander to be written in the Word in that context for eternity? No. They made shipwreck of the faith. And we know we can make shipwreck of the faith too if we're not careful. There, there's churches that have made shipwreck of the faith. And so let's go, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer one more time. Father, I just pray, Father God, that Lord, you speak to us in Jesus' name. Now here the Apostle seeks to... Uh, speaks of himself as a pattern for believers in verse 16 it says how be it for this cause I obtain mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting so Paul is the pattern now few could exceed uh, Saul, the, uh, Saul of Tarsus in his opposition to Christ prior to his, his conversion and I mean he went and he uh, uh, put Christians in prison. He went and he rounded them up. Now he he speaks of sin's delusiveness in verse 13. He says, uh, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. So sin gets in us and, and, and a lot of times, you know, it, it takes us the wrong direction. Sin gets in us and, and, it, and it causes us to do things that are contrary to the Word of God. Sin gets in us and, and we, uh, uh, we, you know, we make up our own uh, gospel. Uh, sin gets in us and, and we, uh, uh, we st start not loving the brethren. Sin gets in us and, and we start being a judge instead of a friend. Sin gets in us uh, and we start uh, uh, having envy and division. Sin gets in the church uh, sometimes uh, and it causes uh, grief to God. And uh, sometimes uh, people's faith is a uh, shipwreck. 
So, Acts 26, 9 through 11. I verily thought with myself as I ought to many things contrary to the name of Jesus. This was Saul of Tarsus in his testimony. Which thing I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints that I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests, that when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. Remember, he was standing there when Stephen was stoned? Yeah. And I punished them oft in every synagogue, and compelled them to blaspheme, and being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even into strange cities. Boy, he was a religious guy, you know. And he had the authority to enforce his religion on the Christians. And he was mad at them. He said, I'm, I'm going to put a stop to this Jesus thing. And remember on the road to Damascus? Jesus put a stop to Saul of Tarsus. He made a complete turnaround of him. Saul of Tarsus was a smart man. Saul of Tarsus was a moral man. And Saul of Tarsus was a religious man. But he wasn't saved until God saved him. Philippians 3, 4 through 6, though I might have also confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I'm more. Circumcised the eighth day. I mean he's given his pedigree here. Of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews. Saul of Tarsus wasn't just a Hebrew. He was the Hebrew of the Hebrews. As touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is of the law, blameless. He was a religious cat, buddy. You know, Saul of Tarsus was going around doing his religious duty when suddenly the light of God's mercy was turned on in his life. And, uh, you know, he was going uh, to uh, Damascus, on the road to Damascus, and, and all of a sudden, uh, the light shone from heaven. And it says in Acts 22, 6, And it came to pass that as I made my journey, I was come nigh unto Damascus about noon. Suddenly, there shone from heaven a great light around me. And, uh, and, and so, uh, it was said that that light was outshone the sun. And the sun was up at noon. And uh, after Jesus revealed himself unto Saul, Saul said, Lord, what must I do? Every saved sinner has the some measure uh, made, uh, 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 as in some major, has made the same discovery. After God saves you, you say, okay, Lord, what should I do now? And you know, the church, uh, a lot of the churches, they said, well, it, we, we got a survey here, we got a little test, and you can discover your spiritual gifts and all that stuff. Well, that's, that's okay, I guess, if, if in the right context. But um, really, we need to make a discovery. And, and I'm just blessed. I, I, I pastor a blessed church. I've had uh, people come up, to, uh, an individual come up to me this morning and said, man, God's been working on my heart. And, and uh, I want to start a men's ministry. And uh, there was another individual who says, I want to start a nursery ministry. And Brother West, he says, man, God's been working on my heart. I want to start a youth ministry. And... and, and what can we do? You see, it's going to take all of us. See, after Jesus revealed himself to Saul, Saul said, Lord, what must I do? He says, go into Damascus and thou uh, will be told what thou must do. And the pattern of Paul was that, uh, was that he was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious. Have you ever killed anyone because they were a Christian? As pastor of a church, I felt like it a couple of times. <laughs> Saul actually did. If Saul of Tarsus can obtain mercy, what about you? Sometimes the devil keeps us beat up and thinking that the mercy of God cannot reach you because you have been too bad in your life. You know, the devil's right there says, you remember that thing you did way back then and, and, and uh, stuff like that and, 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 and you're, you torment yourself and, and different things. Like, you ever do that? Yeah. Or is it just this pastor doing that? Sometimes we torment ourselves, right? Yeah. Because of the, when we, because we look inside of ourselves and, and we get depressed, really. Mm -hmm. Because of, man, 
I look inside of myself and, and, and uh, man, I, I just haven't uh, lived uh, the, the, the right way uh, all my life. I haven't done all the right things. I, I've done things that are contrary to the will of God. And, and, and we look inside of our life and <clears throat> if we look in there too long, we get depressed. And then if we look around and, uh, oh, I know, uh, the political party is going to save me, save the U.S. And, and then we get stressed because, you know, you can tell when they're lying, when their lips are moving, right? And, and, and you get stressed out. But if we look up, we get blessed, right? Because we have to be in Christ. He was the one that was perfect. He's the one that overcame the flesh. And you know, there was only one cure for the flesh. And it wasn't rehabilitation. There was only one cure for the flesh. And he went to the cross of Calvary and died on the cross uh, because, uh, because there was, that was the cure for it. It was death. The Apostle Paul says, I die daily. You see, I declare to you today that the mercy of God goes to the highest mountain and it reaches to the lowest valley. I declare to you today that if God could save the Apostle Paul a uh, mercy, uh, uh, then he can give it unto you. I declare unto you today that if the God of the universe could give this preacher mercy and grace, uh, he can give it unto you. I thank God that he is still the same uh, today as he was yesterday and will be forever. He is still the God of mercy and his mercy endures uh, forever. Can I get a witness of the mercy of God? We need to understand that, that the God has given us mercy. We need to understand that that God has given us grace. We need to understand that God has given us His self. We need to understand that God has given us His power. We need to understand that the, that power is not in me. That power is in Christ alone. We need to understand that when uh, when we uh, come into uh, the ministry, it is the ministry of God, not our ministry. We need to understand when God leads us to do something, He leads us to do it with all of our might uh, because our hands have found to do that and we need to understand that it is Him leading us. Well, glory. 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 You see, when the hell deserving sinner receives the mercy of God, it causes a complete turnaround. It is the goodness of God that brings us to repentance. Right? It's the goodness of God. If it was the judgment of God that led to repentance, the people... In the book of Revelation, they were calling the mountains to fall on because things got so bad on the earth because of the judgment of God. It says they would not repent and turn to God. It's not the judgment of God that brings repentance. It's the goodness of God. Yes. When we understand how bad we are and understand how good God is, it causes us to repent. After God does not give us what we deserve, mercy. He turns around and gives us salvation that we didn't deserve, and He calls that grace. Only after one receives the mercy of God can one experience the grace of God. See, we cannot receive the grace of God if we do not think that uh, we need His mercy. Hmm. <coughs> hmm. Hmm. Oh, you know, I don't deserve that. Oh, yeah? Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. This saved a rich, like, rich like me. Well. The writer of this hymn understood grace because of mercy. I remember that, that day that God gave me a revelation of grace. I finally had to completely surrendered to what God was calling me to do. Let me just tell you that until you completely surrender to what God is calling you to do, you will have trouble in the flesh and be miserable. And I speak to you as one of a personal testimony of that. And what is it? It's called a little thing called double-mindedness. Right? We want to have God and we want to have our own way at the same time. Now, James 1.8 says this, a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. We live in a double-minded America. We live a lot of times where the church is double-minded. You see? Because 
A double-minded man is unstable. And uh, this, this country is unstable. A lot of church, churches are unstable. Because they preach a different gospel. Also, the pattern of the Apostle Paul speaks of the personal responsibility of the believer. Let's go uh, to 1 Timothy 1, 11 and 12. It says, According to the gospel, glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. I know when God called me to preach, He asked me this question, Can you be trusted with my gospel? Can you be trusted with my word? And I didn't know how to answer it. And I says, God, I, I don't know. I, I, I know when I look inside, I, I see the shortcomings of myself. I, I don't know. And I told him, I says, God, if you enable me to, I can. If you enable me to, I can. You see, it says, verse 12, And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me that he counted me faithful putting me into the ministry one of the questions that I have for you today is can you be trusted with the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ or do you tell people like the world does I'm okay you're okay it's all good no that's not the gospel the gospel is, hey, let's go to the, you know, if, uh, if, they're, if, they're, if they're outside of Christ, let's go to the law. See what the law says. I got a word for you from God. It's called the law. They're for blasphemers. They're for whoremongers. They're for homosexuals. It's called the law. What it says here is a, so far, the pattern is mercy, grace, and personal responsibility. Jesus did not say that you had the light and salt. He said you are the light and salt. Do not hide your light under a bushel, but preach the gospel by lip and by life. A lot of people say, well, no, just live a Christian life and people will see it. Sometimes you've got to open your mouth <laughs> and present the gospel. I had, had a man, as Norman and I were talking yesterday, and had a man in there with us, and and man, I we I was pouring I was pouring the gospel on buddy, and uh, I, this guy's not saved. I don't know. I'm gonna pray for him that you know something will stick. But so far, nothing stuck. You know. Christian testimony is in verse 15. This is a faithful saying worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came to the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Paul ascribes salvation to God but denounces self. Galatians 2.20 says, For I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. See, we have to denounce ourselves and praise God. Yeah, our faith is not in myself to do the ministry. My faith is in Christ enabling me to do his ministry. I know I was wondering about if God could use me still do sometimes but you know if you give your life to the Lord and he calls you to do something then do it yeah. Jesus came to this world to save sinners do you qualify or do you think like many people today I'm really not that bad after all I can I can name people who are worse than I am in this uh, in this pattern the apostle Paul said that he was a uh, chief of sinners. There are many churches in America that think the wrong way, and that uh, they that, that uh, th they are thinking the wrong way and are doing more harm than cause uh, to the cause of Christ than good. 
Jesus describes this church in the book of Revelation. In Revelation 3, 14 through 22. I'm going to go there. Revelation 3, 14 through 22. He says, And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Jesus' words. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Some of your translations are reading, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because thou, because you're saying, I'm rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I think that's a lot of churches in America today. Yes, sir. I counsel thee. Jesus is counseling us. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and, and, uh, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thy eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see as many as I love I rebuke and chasten be zealous therefore do what? repent you mean repentance is for the church too? Yes. repentance is for the Christian? yes <clears throat> behold I stand at the door and knock. Now a lot of times we take this verse out of context and relate it to a lost person. This is in the context of the Laodicean church. This is the context of the church in America today. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in, in my throne even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith, and to the churches, plural. He's saying that to the churches. Not just the church of Laodicea. The churches. Understand that the rapture of the church begins with the, the lukewarm being vomited out of the mouth of God. Uh, if you go uh, to uh, chapter 4, after this I looked and behold a door was opened in heaven and the first voice which I heard was it was a trumpet talking with me and says come up hither and I will show thee the things which must be hereafter. Many many believe this is the rapture of the church for, uh, chapter, sorry, for chapter 4. There's a different uh, uh, thoughts on that so uh, I'm not you know uh, I don't want to cramp your your thought or anything like that I know uh, that what I believe is that we better be in Christ and we better be ready to meet him when he gets here amen that's what my belief is <clears throat> the mercy and the grace of God causes a complete turnaround just not a halfway sort of kind of lukewarm commitment Finally, the pattern turns into praise and thanksgiving to God. Back in uh, 1 Timothy 1.17, Now unto the King Eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, the honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. It turns in to the praise of God. Often the language of mortals cannot express the deep things that the heart may feel, but God judges the heart and takes account into every thankful recognition of His mercies. Praise and thanksgiving, adoration and worship are most fitting when the majesty of God's goodness becomes overwhelming. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness, it says in Psalm 107, verse 15. And counting your blessings, blessings do not fail to add your benediction. When counting your blessings, do not fail to add your praise. God, thank you. God, you are the only God in one. Thank you, Lord. That is my benediction. 
you don't forget to add your benediction in Jesus' name. Amen. Where are you at in the relationship with the Lord? Are you in a kind of, sort of, halfway lukewarm uh, relationship? Uh, maybe I would ask, do you, do you love God? Or are you in love with God? There's a difference, isn't there? Now I can say, I can say, say to Gene, yeah, I love you. You know, or I can say, Gene, I really love you. You know. Now there's a difference in that, you know. And believe me, she knows the difference. But, um, and God knows the difference. Whether we're just half-hearted, whether we're double-minded, God looks right down on our, our lives. And you know, I just want us to all come into the grace and the mercy of God. I want this church to be in Christ that this building cannot hold what God is doing in our midst. I want that to happen. I want to see a spiritual awakening right here in Fernley, right? Here it's happening in Kentucky. Why not Fern Tucky? <laughs> <laughs> So, God can do all things. We can do all things through Christ. that strengthens us, right? Amen. Is there any decisions that need to be made this morning? Maybe you need to rededicate your life. Maybe it's Pastor Curtis, man. Uh, you know, the Lord's been, uh, been after me, and, and uh, uh, I know that I haven't uh, been close to God, and, and I just need to get close to God. To rededicate. I mean, I don't know how many times I've rededicated my life. And Lord, because I get out there, I'm just like everybody else, you know, I get out there and, you know, I, I start thinking stupid stuff and, you know, everything, and, and I have to come back and say, Lord, uh, I want to follow you. I want to follow, I want to pick up my cross and follow you. Lord, you know, I've been, I've been sick of how myself has been acting lately, you know, I want to follow you. And you know, and, and there's no shame in saying, Lord, I just want to rededicate my life to you. There's no shame in that. Because the Lord uh, says, you know, come here, child. Let me give you a hug. <laughs> the psalmist said, he, he restoreth my soul. You see, uh, a lot of people, uh, they go on their Christian line, well, my soul never needs restoring. Well, mine does. <laughs> <clears throat> he restoreth my soul. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they come. <clears throat> I mean, you know, the, the psalmist, uh, he had it down. He needed his soul restored. He needed the presence of God to be with him. That's another sermon, but anyway. <laughs> I just want to ask us this morning if we're okay. There ain't one that needs to be saved. You know, I mean, uh, salvation of God is here. And it's available right now. There may become a day when it's not available. But it's available right now. One of these days, God's going to shut the door. And it won't be available. Like he did in the days of Noah. In the days of Lot. That's how the coming of the Son of Man will be. It says... The door's going to be shut. There's not going to be any more opportunity to come to Christ. So let's be about the Father's business. Let's uh, get involved with the youth of this city. Let's get involved with the little kids. Let's get involved with people. Because uh, the body of Christ is one of the physical things we hold in our hand. The Word of God's another one. Amen. I'm going to rededicate my life to the Lord. Father God, we just call upon your name this morning. Lord, we just thank you for Kay. We thank you for rededicating your life this morning. 
And Father, we just um, thank you for I pray for them that Lord, your power would just go through this life and that Lord, your spirit would anoint her from the top of her head to the soles of her feet, O oh Lord God. And Lord, we thank you and praise you for this life that you've given us in this church. And Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Stay here. You can say something if you want. <laughs> and I'm just grateful for this church because it's drawn me closer to the Lord. And I'm very thankful. <coughs> and I hope you're preaching it has really helped me. Right. I got good material. Well, <laughs> 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 oh, that's the physical piece. One of the physical pieces of God we hold, right? When, uh, when the Lord called me to preach, one thing he said, he told me the same thing he told Peter. He said, if you love me, Feed my sheep, you know, and so, uh, you know, I, I do the best I can, you know, and then Eleanor feeds us physically, so. <laughs> you know, Pastor, speaking of that, uh, me, and, me and Sandy were doing a study yesterday, and it said in there, it had a quote in there that really hit me, that, you know, the Bible is not the Word of God, it is the Word of God. Yes. Amen. 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 Yeah, amen. Anybody got anything else to say this morning? I just want to say, church, that I love the Lord. Thank you. Jesus really is the best thing that ever happened to me. One day he called my name. I heard it. I responded. He saved me, filled me with the Holy Ghost, and set me on a rock to stay. He is my rock. He is my sword. He is my shield. He's my everything. He's my all in all. Praise God. Amen. It's good to have my brother in Christ over here, all the way from Russia. <laughs> yeah, he looks like Putin. <laughs> No, I'll meet you outside. <laughs> no, uh, you know, uh, he's, uh, you know, we've gotten acquainted and and uh, he's got the testimony of Jesus in him, and I'm, gl I'm glad you came. You're from Lovelock or Winnemucca? Lovelock. Lovelock, yeah. So, before that, Russia. <laughs> <laughs> All right, praise the Lord. You know, every, every uh, people need the Lord, don't they? Yes, amen. You know, we used to sing a song in little kids' Sunday school. You know, uh, Jesus loves the little children. All the children of the world. Red, yellow, black, and white. They are precious in his sight. You know, Amen. Jesus loves the little children, and uh, we're all little children, really. You know, I mean, um, praise the Lord. Amen. We need to give to this next generation the power of God, right? Mm -hmm. The power of God. We need to show show them the power of God. To, 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 you know, you're not in this thing alone. You can be saved, and the power of God can save your soul. We need to show that to the next generation. Amen. I'm trying to think of where... Uh, uh, maybe... Uh, Psalm 69, 18. Can you put that up? I think, I think this is the right, right verse. It applies to me, I know. This is the right one. 18. No, nope, that's not it. Okay. <laughs> anyway, there's a, I, I was reading a psalm. It says, when I'm old and gray-headed, you know, just let me uh, share the power with this next generation. You know, I'll find it. I marked it in my, my other Bible, but I forgot uh, the address of it. Um, I'll, I'll uh, go back and remember that. So... Amen. Because uh, verse 9, verse 18 said the same thing. Or verse, maybe, maybe it was 19. Put up 19. Verse 19? Yeah, verse 19. Nope, that's not it either. Okay. <laughs> Good verse, though. Right? No. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll find it. All right. I, you know, my, my, my study Bible, well, it's not, you know, just an old 
tore up Bible I have at the house, and it's all marked up, and you know I got duct taped together, and you know stuff like that. And, uh, you know I, but uh, I, I mark stuff down in that. You know, for, make little notes in it and stuff. Jean, she don't like to read a book after I get done with it because I mark it all up. <laughs> so. There it is, Psalm seventy-one, eighteen. We just read this. <laughs> also, yeah, and in uh, verse I think nine says the same thing. Uh, now, also when I'm old and gray-headed, O God, forsake me not, cast me not off time of old age, and forsake me not when my strength faileth. Now go back to nine, uh, eighteen. <coughs> How'd you find that? Because we just read it in one of our studies. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, when I'm old and gray-headed, God, O oh God, forsake me not until I have showed thy strength to this generation and thy power to everyone that is to come. Amen. You know? Amen. And we need to show God's strength and God's power to the next generation, don't we? Amen. Amen. Anybody else got a word before we dismiss? All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, thank you, Lord, for this day that you have made. And Lord, thank you, Lord, we will rejoice and be glad in it, Lord. And, and Lord, we pray, Father God, that Lord, that we would show your strength, we would show uh, your power to this next generation, Lord God. And Lord, I pray, Father God, that Lord, as we uh, go from this place, that Lord, um, we would um, uh, honor you, Father, in everything we do and have a complete turnaround in our life and uh, not trust in our own flesh, but trust in you. And Lord, uh, by faith believing, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you till we meet again.